Avast ye sky rats! Yar! I be Lothans here with Team Identity Crisis. We're here to talk about the patch notes coming today. The 14th of March. I'm here with me, these landlubbers from the team, and also punch out a fellow YouTuber. Yo, what's up, people? Really? Yeah, really. That's all that's all I get after that. That's all you get more. Arr, matey. Alright, I am joined by Ludic, who is a brand new member of the team. We have Olaf, and we have a friend of the team, Punch Out, fellow YouTuber. Thanks for joining me, guys. Hello. Alright, so in Chapter 4, that began today, the 14th of March. And the devs write, uh, in Chapter 4, Helio seeks help from freebooters, the unsavory scrappers and scavengers who work in the shadows of Atlas. With both Omni and Evos keen to publicly announce any slip-ups to discredit their new partner in Heliocore, every member of the new trust is under close watch. That's where freebooters come in to get whatever you need under the shade for a hefty reward, of course. And so Chapter 4 is born. Uh, they've got new skins and taunts available for Lockwood, Dr. Finn, Grimalitions Incorporated, and Zuki. You can earn those through special freebooter loot matrices. Uh, they're going to be available for ISO and put into the general loot matrix after the event. You can also earn an Interrobang emoji just for logging in. And if you log in on St. Patrick's Day weekend, which is going to be Friday to Sunday, you get a free Lockwood skin. So, hold on. One of the things is that it was saying that it's going to be new skins and taunts for Lockwood, Dr. Fan, Grandma, and Zuki. Is that all pirate for all of them, including the Master skins? Yeah, and what's even better is there's no emblems in the matrices this time around. Right, so you can't get screwed if you get that one matrix and you get uh, you know something that you really don't want. Everybody wants the skin, man. You got to get that skin. So it's gonna. I wonder if it's gonna be just like it's been with the last loot matrix stuff, to where it has one mission to where you get it done and then that's it. Then you have to buy the loot matrixes for that special occasion. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it's gonna go from here on out. I would imagine it's a smart business decision. Although the players aren't going to like it very well, the ones like us that have been around a while that are, have gotten used to spamming games and getting those matrices and, and getting everything in them before the event's over. But that's a smart decision as a business because now it forces people to buy loot matrices to try to get everything. You can actually can buy the skins for like yeah. a short period after the promotion's over. So it's not like it's all fade and you must buy boxes to get these skins. If you're a little bit of patient and you hoard up currency, you can buy them. These are only going to be for, I believe, Flux, if I'm not mistaken. That's how it was for the last event, where after the event was over for like one week or two weeks, I think, you could purchase the skins for Flux, but you couldn't purchase them for... Uh, maybe it was only ISO. I can't remember now. Uh, Lothan, it's, it's actually Flux for the Prestige skin, but it's ISO for all the other skins. Okay, yeah. So that's not really too bad. I mean, you play the game enough, you're going to have everything you need to buy in one of them. Because after the... Uh, what was it? The the Valentine's Day event was over. Before those two weeks were up, I had plenty of currency, whether it be ISO or Flux, to purchase one skin of every character, whichever one that I wanted. But let's move on. We're bringing back Extraction, or I should say the devs are bringing back Extraction. Due to popular demand, Extraction Mode is back. Uh, uh, you guys, I know uh, Olaf has had experience with that as myself. I don't know if the rest of you have. Yeah, I've played Extraction before. I don't know why. It just seemed weird being an objective-based game on a game that was based around deathmatch. I don't know. I actually think Extraction is a lot better than the all-random mode or the, the crazy extreme mode. Because it's actually completely different in like the meta and like what's good. Yeah, I liked it quite a bit, actually, when it was around before. But if you guys don't know, watching there at home, uh, you hold on to the case. There's a, the case that spawns in the map somewhere. You can get kills to earn points, or you can hold the case per turn and get points. When your team earns 10 points, an extraction zone will appear, and the first team to extract the case to the point, each team gets one of those zones, by the way, or have the most points after 20 turns, wins. Uh, you can go well above 5 points, which would normally be the kill counter, and there is one change from the last time. You'll need to hold the case to win the game if you have the most points after 20 turns, so technically speaking, you can be winning in points, turn 20, but the enemy team has the case. You can't finish the game that way. You have to take them out, grab the case, then you can win the next turn. That's going to make it a little more swingy, but I think it's a good change. But it's not like it's 
too much of a mix up. So overcon button. I don't know if any of you guys have played today. I did a little bit. There's a little button at the bottom right corner of the screen in game now for the overcons. And the devs made a little notation here that says overcons were difficult to use in match. Hashtag blame James. So we've added an overcon button to the HUD. And so that I think that makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, I guess it's 2017. People don't like out t- typing out commands. I do like the new overcon uh, interface. I do not like the new GG interface that makes you wait after every match ends. And another thing, um, has this been happening for anybody else since the latest patch? I don't know if it's just a thing when you're a contender or what, but uh, when it's tallying up my points after a ranked match, it's much slower than it used to be. Like, I have to yeah. sit there waiting and waiting for what seems like eternity before I can go on to the next match. Yeah, I, I noticed that as well. So it's it's not just you. It's 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 casual scrubs like me as well that have to sit and wait for that. <laughs> What's the reasoning behind that decision? Like, I don't want to see my numbers just slowly crawl up. I think they're open to feedback, but I think it will be changed in the future. Another thing I experienced since the patch was I noticed that they changed some of the icons. Like, Surin has a completely different icon. I guess it would be more obvious to newer players which ability is your dash just by looking at the icon. Sure, little tweaks like that I would expect from time to time. Did any of you get a chance to see the ridiculously overpowered mod they put in by mistake? <laughs> I saw a screenshot of it. The, yeah, the, the one that makes Lockwood's bullet bounce over the whole map and just make people <laughs> explode. <laughs> yeah, and he gets like 20 energy if it hits, bounces five times. No minimum range or anything like that. It's just totally ridiculous. So let's hop down to the general area. There is a new Flux Capacity title you can show off for your banner. Uh, show off your wealth by leveling it up with Flux. Can you max it out, the devs ask. I have that, and it's at 1%. I don't know how to level that up. It takes 1 million Flux, apparently. How, would you do like pump Flux into it, or is it like a passive gain as you play matches? I think you have to invest flux into it, but no one's going to get it maxed out in the short term. Yeah. Unless they have a million. Unless your name's Baby Millie. You play every day, 24 hours a day. I think he only has like 450, like 600,000 or something. I mean, that that's more than halfway there, you know? <laughs> Will Phil now has a sweet new skin called Fillmore, and uh, it's the tie-dye skin. That they were teasing on their uh, their dev stream last Friday. Any thoughts on that? It's not a, it's not a bright neon pink thong like I wanted, but it is something. It's interesting they devote dev hours to this, but I think it's something that people wanted. <laughs> and also, a female will fill version is coming in a later hotfix. Any skins purchased for the male version will apply to both the male and female will fills. So I guess there's more will fill skins coming. Please make it be the thong. That would be amazing. Uh, but you get well, the skin for all of them, I guess. Yeah, we don't want to make the mistake of assuming Phil is a gender. <laughs> so, so they fixed an issue where the continue button wasn't appearing at the game's end. Uh, the only person pickier than Helio about clothes is Lockwood. He's finally approved his Helio core skin, and it can be obtained via daily missions. They improved the performance of the friends list, particularly for users with a lot of friends. I read this earlier, and uh, as I was playing today, I didn't really notice any change at all there. I've got probably over 100 people on my friends list. I didn't see what the change was offhand. Yeah, I'm not as popular as you, uh, Lothan, so I wouldn't know. I only have about 80 or so. I don't know about popular, but I tricked a lot of people into it. That used to be the only way you could play, you could group with somebody, was you add them to your friends list, then you could play with them. Now you can just invite them. Yep, back in the old days. And back in the day when people had to be my friends. See, that's why. They just forgot to remove me later. Uh, the graphics should be sharper when using the options graphics quality medium and high on most PCs with modern graphics cards. I noticed the change there for sure, so that'll be nice for most people. They fixed a bug causing some chase paths and last known position indicator positions to not work correctly when the target moves out of vision during dash phase but gets hit by something mid-dash. That seems rather specific. I wonder if they fixed the Garrison rocket indicator as well. That's what came to mind when I when I read that, but this specifically says when they move out of vision during the dash phase but get hit by something mid-dash, and and I don't even know how that's possible. Like unless... a trap? I mean, you get hit by a trap, right? Trap? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that, that would be the most obvious way. 
but that that definitely is not fitting the uh, the garrison fade kata with rockets and he shows up where he was when he started the dash shoots the rockets from there and then he's he appears somewhere else the next turn i don't think that fixes that because that's it's worded differently i agree I, re- I really hope they fix that because that's that's annoying because what happens is every time it happens, you got to explain to your team, no, he's not where you saw him. He's actually in this space. And then the newbie players don't believe you, and they go and they throw the game. <laughs> yeah, it is very frustrating. Um, I got tricked by that last week, actually. I guess I'm the scrub. Uh, in addition, an action can now be canceled by pressing its button again while already locked in for the turns. You don't have to hit escape, which sometimes would cancel your entire movement for that whole turn by doing so. So this is a good change, I think, for me. A nice quality of life change. And a couple of things that just are kind of little fixes. Alternate VFX now have video previews so you can see what you're buying. And spectators should now see picks and bans in custom games. Actually, I I take that back. That is pretty huge for the competitive scene. Oh. Very nice. That's something Very nice. Yeah, we we were calling for that as soon as they came out with the spectate mode for customs and, and or the draft mode i should say for customs and now it's there very quick on that one so now we're going to get into what ludic wants to talk about the most the balance changes uh the general balance changes before we get into the specifics which is brennan quark but generally speaking ignore cover mods now reduce cover effectiveness by half so they're only going to deal 75 percent damage through cover instead of full damage so a lot of the the ignore cover mods like a lockwood alt like uh, the the Blackburn ignore cover on his stem, things like that. You think that changes those characters in any way, where they're they're not as strong as they used to be, or does that? I think it definitely changes some characters. For example, we have L versus Zuki. Zuki is probably already considered a better character. Her all goes through cover without any mod required, so she's not affected by the change. In order to, for L's alt to do much. She has to have that mod to make her all worthwhile. Yeah, it also affects some of the other top tier firepowers like uh, Lux Lockwood or Celeste. Yeah, both their alts have that ignore cover mod that you can buy. And, and before, that was the go-to. Is is it going to change some builds now? Or are people going to be like, okay, I don't really have to take this now. I can go some different direction. I'm definitely not using the cover penetration on Blackburn. Oh, yeah, because Blackburn actually had an ignore cover mod as well. It wasn't as commonly used. He has the one on his primary, or on his, on his stem, that modifies his primary. And he's got the one on his uh, ultimate. That's right. And I, I think the one on the stem was pretty common. But uh, the one on the ultimate, you didn't see as much. But I think this will definitely change people's choices, at least on the stem mod. I don't think it really changes power all of that much because you're still doing 37, which is which is still pretty good, bud. So, punch out. I haven't heard from you in a while. What does this do to your alt mod pick for L? Because I know you're like the perennial L player around here. Uh, do you stick with the ignore cover, or do you pick something else? You're gonna have to. 75 percent from 30, or from or alt is probably what 40. So she still does 30 damage. But if you don't keep it on there, you're only going to do 20 damage behind cover because cover yeah. takes half off. She basically has to take that mod. So I think L might be affected more than anyone else because with Lockwood, you still have the option of the range mod. I feel like this affects the low tier ones more than the high tier ones. It doesn't affect Zuki. Lockwood has other interesting options. Yeah, I think really Celeste and L probably got hit the most out of that. They added a new, a new mod a couple of patches ago that increased the range, but since you had to ignore cover, no one really considered it. So it actually may, may come into play. But I can't think of anything you'd want to take on L, because L just has a lot of mods that aren't really good. That, that's my general thoughts on it. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> I'm I'm interested in the, uh, the Bryn changes. Now she can get up in people's faces without taking full damage. Yeah, that's a huge change for Bren, a a really big buff in my opinion, because as a frontliner, you want to be right in their face. So let's kind of talk about that on Bren. Aegis now grants cover against adjacent enemies, so somebody standing right next to you. Uh, Bren's job of getting in people's faces was often at odds with her shield being ineffective in melee range, say say the devs. With this change, Bren can feel good about chasing down those pesky firepowers. 
does this make her viable? I actually picked her in rank today and played her and was successful. Is is that the reason why? I don't know, but do you think I she's... I think it makes a pretty big difference. To me, oh, now, she can, now she can auto-follow like a, reg, like a regular frontliner. But we will have to see. I mean, it still doesn't give her additional mitigation over cover. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it makes her a little bit more effective. I, I would say actually a lot more effective because now, like... Ludic pointed out, you can get up in people's faces and auto-follow somebody if you don't know exactly where they're going to go that next turn and not be punished for it by your own kit. So I think it's huge. Yeah, she was the only she was the only frontliner where basically you'd throw the game by auto-following anybody because following a, a firepower would make them out-damage you. They'd kill you faster than you could kill them. Yeah, and the big daddy of them all, Quark, I don't think Quark's sitting on top of his mountain of corpses anymore because Rushing Radiate has been removed completely from the game and a new mod will replace it soon. The devs made a comment here that Rushing Radiate has proven to make Quark too strong at chasing down his enemies. Removing the counterplay of full moving to break Quark's tether makes disengaging from Quark too difficult and often unfun to play against. I would agree with that statement. Uh, I would also add that it made it too easy for Quark to make a bad move one turn and then completely rectify it the following turn by basically using his abilities and then sprinting into a safe spot the next turn. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think it's a good change. It might be interesting if the new mod might give like Unstoppable or something, but that might be a little too strong. Maybe it'll give uh, Quark... <laughs> Can you imagine if they gave Quark a scramble mod for his Radiate? Uh, oh my god. No. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Just a thought, you know? Doesn't it have to cost happen. like seven points. Please. <laughs> seven points. Bear, It'll bear cost ten points. Ten point mod, scramble on radiate. Let's do it. Yeah, no one would take that because you have to take a mod on his ultimate. I much. would take it. I would take it in a heartbeat. Just battle cork all day long, scramble every scramble the, the tank all game long. What are they going to do about it? Dash you? <laughs> Can't do it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, please don't do let's, that for let's real. Let's not speculate too much. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's it, guys. Any other thoughts about what we just talked about? Anything that you think changes, like the tier list, for example, with the, the, the cover changes and Bryn's change, Quark's change? Who's the top dog now? I don't want to be too premature on making... Lockwood. You know, I, still, I still think Lockwood's <laughs> number one, even though he was affected by this uh, cover nerf. He still has the three extra range on his ult, which is pretty powerful. It can actually hit people from outside of vision. I do think Sluss is hit harder than some other top tier firepowers, and I think she will drop. And then Zuki will rise up a little bit, I think. Zuki's going straight to the top. Zookamania is going to run wild, brother. Well, yeah, I guess it's the era of Lothans, right? <laughs> That's right. So, I mean, obviously L got hit hard, Celeste got hit hard, Lockwood a little bit, because he's got to change that alt mod to, to something different, really. Um, so, I mean, really, maybe not, because it doesn't reduce it all the way down. You know, it's not half damage, 75%. I think it's only a ner meaningful nerf to the people who, who didn't have cover as their one good mod. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it affects Blackburn that much. I wouldn't say it affects Lockwood that much. Well, that was it kind of Blackburn's thing, though, wasn't it? To to have that one shot every few turns to completely ignore cover. So you, even though your enemy has he's, good positioning, he doesn't care. He does have other good mods for that option, but I I agree it it will hurt him a little bit. And he does he's the only one with two mods that are affected. But I don't think the work cover on the ultimate was the most commonly one used. No, for sure not. I agree with that. All right, so that's going to wrap it up here for the patch. March 14th, 2017. I am Lothans. That was Ludic. The other guy uh, was Olaf. And there's Punch Out as well. What was that? Oh, we're done already. Yep. That's, that's the end of it. Take care. All right. Take care, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming out, guys. No problem. All right. So like if you liked it, share it with your buddies. Let everybody who plays Atlas Retro or maybe thinking about it know about the patch notes and what's coming up and what's changing. And if you didn't like it, go ahead and leave a comment below. Let us know why you didn't and how we can improve. And we'll see you next time.